Hello, everybody, and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian, and I'm here to bring you another episode in our continuing series about the constellations. We are once again days away from the vernal equinox, the moment of the sun's northerly crossing of the celestial equator that marks the beginning of northern spring. And that means it's time to leave the winter constellations behind and return to the spring sky. Remember that the path the sun appears to take through the background stars is called the ecliptic, and the constellations that fall along the ecliptic are called the zodiac. We covered a few of the spring zodiac constellations last year. The ecliptic runs through the winter constellations Taurus and Gemini, and then passes through the spring constellations Leo and Virgo. However, this conspicuously dark area between Gemini and Leo is home to another constellation. The stars here form Cancer, the Crab. Cancer is one of the dimmest constellations in the zodiac, so it can be very hard to see. Cancer takes the form of an inverted Y shape. The brightest star in Cancer, Beta Cancri, is only magnitude 3.5, or about one-sixth as bright as Regulus, the brightest star in Leo. Don't feel frustrated if you can't see Cancer. It's very hard to see unless you're under very dark skies, and when you're under very dark skies, you may see so many stars that it becomes difficult to pick Cancer out of the sky. Even though it may be difficult to see Cancer, it's still an interesting region of the sky to become familiar with. Near the end of the left branch of the Y shape, towards the inside, there is an open cluster of stars, Messier 67. M67 is one of the oldest open clusters near Earth. Most of the stars in the cluster are relatively sun-like, or are smaller red dwarf stars. Any larger, hotter stars that formed in M67 have since evolved into their red giant phases or beyond. Because of the similarity the stars of M67 bear to the Sun, it was suggested for a short time that perhaps the Sun had formed in M67 originally. But more recent simulations show that there's no way that the Sun formed there. Still, wherever the Sun did form, it may have been in an open cluster much like the one you see when looking at M67. The most famous deep sky object in Cancer is located just to the Gemini side of the center of the constellation. Under dark skies, sharp-eyed observers may notice a spot of nebulosity in Cancer, a cloudy-looking object. Binoculars or a low-power telescope will show this nebulosity for what it is, the Beehive Cluster. Also known as M44, the Beehive Cluster gets its common name from its resemblance to bees swarming around the entrance to a hive. The Beehive is another open cluster of stars, and, similar to M67, most of these stars are of the older and cooler variety. However, the Beehive actually has more in common with the Hyades star cluster in Taurus. Both clusters are about the same age and are moving in the same direction with similar speeds. This possibly points to a common origin for the two clusters. So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and look for Cancer the Crab among the stars of the spring sky. If you have binoculars or a small telescope, try to find those open clusters hidden in Cancer, M67 and M44, the Beehive Cluster. That's it for today. Next time we'll explore some more constellations of the spring. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium, wishing you clear skies. <laughs>